My name is Prakriti Gaba, and I am a cardiovascular medicine fellow at the Timmy Study Group and Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. So, you know, dating back to the 1990s, uh, when the BARI trial data came out, um, there were questions regarding which approach is the best revascularization approach for patients with coronary disease. Is it PCI or cabbage? And at the time, the thought was that cabbage by far was the best approach for those individuals with diabetes. Um, now, over the last few decades, we've seen improvements in PCI and stent technology. And, um, you know, there have been more trials that have been conducted to understand, you know, which revascularization method is better now. In patients with left main disease who are especially at high risk, um, you know, the question is, is still is still being explored. And there were several tries that trials that explored this question, including the pre-combat syntax, Noble and Excel trials. Um, and a big meta-analysis was published last year to, to, to sort of actually explore this question in all comers. We thought that patients with diabetes were especially at high risk, and so we wanted to understand whether in patients with or without diabetes with left main disease, you know, is cabbage still better or does PCI have good outcomes? So we actually included individual level patient data from the four randomized trials I mentioned earlier, um, and patients were sort of categorized based on the presence or absence of diabetes and then also by whether or not they underwent PCI or cabbage. So the key findings are that so in in the entire in all four trials about a quarter of patients 25% had diabetes and overall we found that patients with diabetes just tended to have higher rates of adverse events they had worse survival than patients without diabetes they had more cardiovascular death more spontaneous myocardial infarction and higher rates of needing repeat revascularization the second part of our analysis then focused on the revascularization question. Okay, so now if you look at diabetics and patients that don't have diabetes, uh, is PCI or cabbage better? And what we found was um, revascularization with PCI versus cabbage actually led to similar survival regardless of diabetes status. There was, however, some difference in non-fatal events. So there was a uh, lower risk of early stroke within the first year with PCI as opposed to cabbage. Um, and then down the road uh, at the five-year mark, we did see a higher rate of, um, of uh, spontaneous MI and repeat revascularization in patients undergoing PCI as opposed to cabbage. So ultimately, you know, there's no difference in survival. Um, and so we really think that a heart team approach where you sort of weigh the risks and benefits of the procedure with the patient and, you know, cater it on an individual basis is the most important. But for patients that are reasonable candidates for PCI or cabbage um, and sort of fit some of the parameters that we outlined in, in this pooled analysis, uh, I think, you know, you could really go either way. You know, ultimately, this is the question we're trying to address here because patients with left main disease and those with diabetes are just so high risk. So we want to just make sure we're giving them all the options that are available. Um, and I think the takeaway is that if a patient is equally suitable for PCI or cabbage and has diabetes or doesn't have diabetes, you can consider either approach, uh, PCI or cabbage in them. So the next steps are, you know, I think this question has been addressed uh, pretty well now in several individual trials and now this meta-analysis, but we'd like to understand more, uh, more about, you know, uh, whether other characteristics of patients with left main disease influence their outcomes and impact which revascularization strategy is best for them. So we're continuing to do more analyses within this pooled database and we'll keep you posted on, uh, on other findings.